Hey everyone, today we are looking into Mary Toft, a humble woman from the small community of Godalming in rural Surrey, who became the talk of England in the autumn of 1726, after she was witnessed to have given birth to several rabbits. Here we examine her strange story and what it was all about. Mary Denny was born at some point between 1701 and 1703, and was baptised in the local parish church on the 21st of February 1703. Very little is known about her early life, other than that she came from a poor family and married quite young in 1720, probably around 17 or 18 years of age. Her husband was a man named Joshua Toft, who worked as a journeyman clothier or tailor. Following their marriage, the Tofts had a hard time, the English clothes-making business had been suffering in the early 18th century, and Joshua was often underemployed. Moreover, the family could not afford him to be out of work, as Mary and he quickly had three children in the years after their wedding, two girls called Mary and Anne, and a boy named Joshua. Perhaps it was their poverty which led to Mary to have a reportedly ill temper. The events which brought Mary Toft to national attention in England began in 1726, when she once again became pregnant. On this occasion though, Mary appeared to miscarry in August of that year, expelling several body parts. However, weeks later, on the 27th of September 1726, Mary went into labour again. This time, Anne Toft, her mother-in-law, and a neighbour named Mary Gill, attended on her, but they got a shock, as what Mary Toft began to expel wasn't human, but actually looked like a stillborn rabbit. Perturbed, they sent word to a local surgeon after the supposed stillborn, a man by the name of John Howard, about what had happened. Howard was sceptical at first, but when he visited the Toft household a few days later, Mary went into another apparent labour and expelled body parts of yet another stillborn rabbit. Having now become convinced of Toft's story, Howard arranged for Mary to be brought to the town of Guildford, where he would deliver any more body parts which might emerge. Mary also began relating what she believed might be happening. She had, she claimed, been startled by a rabbit while working in the hop fields near Godalming, when she was about five weeks into her pregnancy. She had tried to catch the rabbit, kill it and bring it home to eat, but it escaped. Shortly thereafter, she had an unusual dream about rabbits. And so it was strange to her, that when she had her first labour in August, and again in late September, that she expelled what resembled parts of stillborn rabbits. Mary stayed at Guildford for some time, during which Howard oversaw many more labours and during which she expelled further rabbits. By now, news of her bizarre story was spreading across southern England, and by early November, it had reached the court of King George I in London. The royal family took a personal interest in the story, and soon, the king became determined to investigate matters himself, and here is where it would all get even stranger. The first person dispatched to Guildford to investigate the matter on behalf of the royal family and the government was Henry Davenant, a member of the royal court. Davenant set off in early November to Guildford. By this stage, Mary was expelling rabbit parts every few days, and Howard was keeping careful diaries of these events, as well as quite gruesomely, keeping the rabbit body parts preserved in spirits. When Davenant arrived, Howard showed him these, and so it was that Davenant returned to London seemingly convinced that Mary Toft was indeed forming rabbits in her womb, which were then being expelled in pieces. When this was reported at court, a decision was taken to send some experts to Guildford, and in mid-November, Nathaniel Saint-André, the royal surgeon and anatomist to the royal household, and Samuel Molyneux, a private secretary to the Prince of Wales, the future King George II, headed to Guildford. They were shown the preserved body parts and Howard's diaries, before witnessing Mary expelling 
what was by then the 15th rabbit. Curiously, the evidence of all of this was so convincing that Saint André, an expert, believed Mary. He even set his reputation on the line by publishing a short pamphlet on the matter entitled A Short Narrative of an Extraordinary Delivery of Rabbits, which was published in London. Saint André's text added to a growing number of pamphlets and newsletters being published in the capital about the bizarre occurrences in Surrey. These appeared with a name such as A True and Perfect Narrative of a Woman near Guildford in Surrey who was delivered lately of 17 rabbits. Another called Doctors in Labour, a philosophical inquiry into the wonderful Colney Warren, lately discovered at Godalming near Guildford in Surrey, and a certain Mr. Brathwaite's pamphlet entitled Remarks on a Short Narrative of an Extraordinary Delivery of Rabbits, performed by Mr. John Howard, surgeon at Guildford. As a result of all of these, by the early winter of 1726, Mary Toft was a talk of the capital. Not everyone was so convinced though. The king had another royal surgeon in London. This was a German who had served George I at Hanover in Germany, before George ever became king of England. This man, Syriacus Alhers, now proceeded to Guildford himself. Like Saint André and Molyneux before him, he was shown the evidence Howard had amassed, and he witnessed Mary Toft's 16th labour, an expulsion of a rabbit. And then he promptly returned to London and informed the king that the entire thing was a hoax. His own account of it appeared in print in London just five days after Saint Andre's pamphlet. He entitled it Some Observations Concerning the Woman of Godalming. The scandal was such by now that the king wanted to resolve the controversy once and for all. Accordingly, he dispatched a team of individuals to Guildford to collect all the available evidence and return to London with it and Toft, who by now was said to have expelled 17 rabbits. This they did, and Toft was accordingly brought to London, where she was lodged in Leicester Fields. In London over the days that followed, many members of London's and England's medical profession began to gather to witness Mary Toft giving birth to an 18th stillborn rabbit. However, they were to be disappointed. Although Toft alleged that she had experienced some contractions, she did not expel any more rabbits. As disappointment gave way to suspicion, Toft came under intense questioning, not just from the medical professionals, but also increasingly from justices of the peace and court officials. They asked things such as why her labours had suddenly stopped, and wondered if she had simply been deceiving people all along. In December, the truth surrounding her case would come to light, and that month, Thomas Onslow, 2nd Baron Onslow, discovered during his investigation into Mary Toft that for the past month, Toft's husband Joshua had been buying young rabbits. Onslow then wrote to a physician, stating that he would publish his findings, yet he was too late to discover the truth. The same day, one Thomas Howard, who worked as a porter, confessed to Justice of the Peace, Sir Thomas Clarges, that he had been bribed by Toft's sister-in-law Margaret to sneak a rabbit into Toft's chamber. When Mary was questioned, she denied all accusations claiming that she was hungry and was only going to eat the rabbit. Eventually, Toft cracked when she was threatened with a very painful experiment to determine any secrets she was carrying. As such, she and then her husband confessed to what had been happening all along. The entire thing had been an elaborate fabrication. Following her initial miscarriage in August 1726, Mary's husband and her mother-in-law had cut up a dead cat and removed its innards and inserted the backbone of a eel into the cat's intestines. This creation which had been designed to look like a rabbit, had been placed in Mary's reproductive tract. It was then announced that same day, the 27th of September 1726, that Mary had gone into labour. Thus, what Mary Gill, the Toft's neighbour, had witnessed being allegedly delivered later that day, 
were different body parts of animals, which had been fashioned to look like a rabbit of some sort. The rabbit monster was then taken to John Howard, the local surgeon in Guildford, who became convinced Mary had indeed been carrying a rabbit during her pregnancy, when she also expelled the alleged rabbit head a few days later. After that, the ruse had become more and more elaborate, as more people were drawn to Guildford to witness the births. Thus, the rabbits which Mary had claimed to be expelling during her repeated labours were nothing more than gruesome accumulations of animal parts, which had been used to fool Howard, the royal surgeon, and then most of London. The Toft's motive had been purely financial. They believed that if their story became famous enough, they could start earning money for people to come and see Mary giving birth to the rabbits, and this would pull them out of the poverty they were living in. Yet the Toft family made no profit from the affair. Hence, in the last days of 1726, after months of growing controversy, the deception was revealed, and many in London and wider afield were disappointed and shocked. Following revelations of the hoax, Mary Toft was imprisoned in Tothill Fields Bridwell for months. During this time, crowds mobbed the prison hoping to catch a glimpse of the now infamous Toft. Yet she would soon be released, as it was unclear of what charge should be made against her, and she was never found guilty of any crime or sentence, and so the case was dropped. She was finally discharged from prison in April 1727, and returned to Godalming, but her story continued to generate commentary in publications. For instance, one of the foremost British poets of the age, Alexander Pope, composed the Dunciad in 1728 about her, a poem which revolves around the story of a woman who gives birth to monsters. Similarly, the noted English painter, cartoonist and social critic, William Hogarth, produced two cartoons on the episode. One, the wise men of Godalming in consultation in 1726, when the case was still being deliberated on, and a second decades later entitled Credulity, Superstition and Fanaticism. Appearing in 1762, the latter lampooned the willingness of certain sections of society to believe outlandish tales such as those of Mary Toft. After a brief period of celebrity following her release in early 1727, Mary Toft faded back into obscurity. In February 1728, she gave birth to a final child, a daughter named Elizabeth, who was noted in the Godalming Parish Register as her first child after her pretended rabbit breeding. The local magnate, Charles, second Duke of Richmond, who had a residence in the town, used to sometimes pay her to appear at gatherings at his manor house there, as a sort of local celebrity or cultural oddity. She reappeared in legal records again in 1740, when she was charged with stealing livestock, likely because she was still living in poverty. When she died in January 1763, her obituary appeared in the London newspapers. She was buried in Godalming on January 13th, and was around 62 years of age at the time of her death. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Mary Toft, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of her life and the hulks down below in the comments. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments as well. And I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.